Okay, in this lecture, I'm just going to uh, talk a little bit about uh, integrity, uh, what that really looks like, and how easy it is to compromise um, your integrity. Uh, so what is integrity? Um, growing up, I loved building uh, towers. I love building towers out of Legos specifically, and I remember as I built this tower out of Legos, I, I built this tower, I was, I was pretty young, I want to say I was about, uh, I don't know, eight or nine years old, and I built this tower out of Legos that went from the ground all the way up to the ceiling, uh, and I was so proud of it um, because it actually touched the ceiling. And um, I, I knew that it wasn't that sturdy, that it wasn't that strong, uh, but at the same time, I was just really impressed with myself that it was able to reach all the way up to the ceiling. And so my brother, uh, being the uh, annoying big brother that brothers are, came into my room and started to try to jump up and down to try to knock it over. But my tower was too strong, the integrity of my tower was not compromised, and it stood strong. And I was like, I'm, I'm very happy about this. Uh, and so he, he kept on doing that throughout the day, and then uh, a little bit later in the day, he came in with a big ball, and he just threw the ball as hard as he could. Uh, actually, I don't think it was that big, but it was like a bouncy ball. Threw the ball as hard as he could at my, at my tower, and my tower just shattered. And the integrity of my tower was not able to stand up against the forces of my brother throwing a ball at my tower. All that to be said... Um, we have a plan. Every single one of us has a plan of what we're going to do when we are faced with questionable decisions. Uh, we have a plan saying, hey, I am not going to engage in this. I am not going to do that. I am not going to cross this line. I am not going to uh, cheat. Um, but uh, the moment that we have the opportunity where it's in a really gray area, especially this semester, especially a semester where everything's online and you're like, hey, you know what, we're in this gray area. And to be really honest, I, 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 I don't really know if what I'm doing is okay or not. I don't know if it's wrong. Uh, nobody sees me doing it. It's kind of one of those things that, you know, if a tree falls in the middle of the woods, but nobody's there to hear it, did the tree make a sound? And in the same way, you know, if, uh, if I help somebody, uh, with their work, but nobody's there to see that I help them with my work, is it actually wrong? And, uh, you know, that's kind of what we're dealing with right now. We're dealing with a lot of ambiguity, a lot of, hey, I don't know what's going on. I don't, uh, I don't know what's right. I don't know what's wrong. Uh, and, Unfortunately, uh, we need to sometimes set clear boundaries or we just kind of need a little bit of a slap in the face to say, hey, you know what? You do know what's right. You do know what's wrong. Just remind yourself of it. And so that's what I'm going to talk about for just a few minutes here. First of all, you know, I, I, uh, I know that I'm talking a lot about integrity, but I'll be straight up honest with you. Uh, when I was in sixth grade, I got caught cheating. I, uh, I, my sister shared her or saved her uh, paper on my uh, on my computer, and uh, when when she saved it on my computer in my folder, I said to myself, "Well, it's in my folder, so therefore, since it's in my folder, uh, I'm going to turn it in as my own." So I put my own grammatical errors into it because my sister's a lot better writer than me, and I tried to make it look like mine, and I turned it in to the teacher, uh, only to find out, "Oh, whoops! Wait a second. My sister had turned in the exact same paper to the exact same teacher two weeks prior. Uh, so I got in trouble for that one. Um, and, uh, you know, I thought to myself, my sixth grade self, oh, I'm not going to do this again. Uh, but inevitably, you know, when you're surrounded by an environment where people uh, are perfectly fine with, uh, you know, compromising their integrity, uh, you'll continue to do that. And so when I was in high school, um, you know, I didn't copy a paper word for word, but, you know, we would share answers on worksheets. And I'd say to myself, oh, it's just in a little answer. I, I, I struggled getting it. It's just this. It's just that. But the moment that you start saying just this or just that, it becomes much more. Um, and then uh, when I got to uh, college, 
what I did is um, I would basically find the rules. I would find the syllabus, and I would uh, skate as close to I as as close to the rules as I could, knowing that uh, what I was doing was technically okay because it wasn't technically forbidden. Uh, but uh, you know, I, I I was more of that. I'm going to get as close to the line as possible without actually crossing it. Um, and so, you know, that, that worked for me when I was in college. Uh, I didn't get in a whole lot of trouble. Uh, really, I never got in any trouble in college because I technically didn't ever do anything wrong. Um, but that doesn't mean that what I was doing was necessarily right. Um, and so now that I'm in a career where I have to be, uh, where I have to have integrity, where if I publish something, uh, I'm going to tell you another story. I, I was, uh, we, we have to get publications as a professor. And if I don't get publications, I'm, I would technically lose my job. And so, uh, there was this publication that I needed to get out and, uh, literally no lie, uh, 30 minutes before I was supposed to send out this publication, I realized that there was a, a huge like error, uh, in my work. There was a huge error where I had accidentally said that there was one thing uh, in the statistical analysis when I had actually accidentally included another thing. Now, I could have turned it in, and no one probably would have ever even noticed, but I said to myself, I'm not going to start my career by turning in a document that I know is wrong. That turning in a document that I know that what's being represented there isn't actually what is actually there. And so uh, for the next 30 minutes, I worked as feverishly as I could to update everything to make the the document uh, correct. And I turned it in and uh, I felt so much better about myself knowing that what I turned in was actually correct, that it was exactly what I said it was. I wasn't padding anything. I wasn't uh, doing things that were... Um, you know, inappropriate, because the thing is with peer reviewed journals, their job is to look at it and say, is this actually correct? Is this, uh, um, you know, reliable? And if you keep putting stuff out there, that's not reliable, your stuff will get flagged and you'll never be able to publish again. Um, and so, uh, right now in my world, uh, especially because I've got my kids and, and my family and, you know, I, I just really care about, uh, being here at Baylor. It's like, I, I can have a choice to skate as close to that line as possible, but I care so much about the community that I'm in that I know that skating that line does not help the community. It might help me. It might help uh, further my career, uh, you know, cutting corners and doing things that are a little unethical, but, um... In the end, what we're talking about is what's going to help us as human beings, what's going to help us as the Baylor community, and uh, the Baylor community, what's going to help us is to hold one, hold one another accountable and encourage one another and to uh, stay as far away from that questionable line as possible. Um, you have so many different opportunities uh, in, in your world um, to demonstrate that you have integrity in your finances, in your work, uh, you know, in the way that you represent yourself. You say, hey, this is who I am. This is where I'm from. Um, don't don't t don't say, hey, I've got these skills when you don't actually have those skills, um, you know, with with your time. Uh, what is it that you're doing with your time? Um, and uh, what's funny is. Um, you know, you've got all these people that they're like, oh, we've got our, we've got our backs. We, we know that what we're doing, we're not going to get caught. Uh, but uh, sometimes, uh, you know, things catch up to you. Um, you, you. You don't realize that things are going to catch up to you. Uh, but like, for instance, the mob, they, uh, they didn't get caught for, um, there's this particular instance, they didn't get caught for all of these uh, horrible things that they were doing with killing people or, you know, the really shady things. What they got caught on was tax laws. Um, and so, uh, they, they were like, Hey, you know what, we're going to be bad in all these other areas that we're protecting and making sure that nobody can catch us. Uh, but, uh, they weren't paying attention to the tax laws and that's how they got them. Um, but, uh, so it's really easy to say, Hey, you know, I'm going to compromise in this area or I'm going to compromise in that area. But what we really need to be saying is, Hey, I'm not willing to compromise at all. I am going to make sure that I'm above reproach in every area, um, and make sure that I am representing myself in such a way that I know that I'm going to be able to stand behind what I did 10 years from now. 
Um, not only that, but when you compromise, yeah, you might win something today, but you may have lost something even bigger with, uh, you know, the relationship that you sacrificed or, you know, something else that you have sacrificed at the same time that you had a, a small momentary win. Uh, this is this right here is uh, Kohlberg's theory of moral development, and this is going to explain why I do not turn everyone into the honor council. Okay, when you are a child, uh, you need punishment, um, and uh, the honor council is unfortunately kind of like a form of punishment. Where there are some students, there are quite a few students that need that threat of punishment over them to, for them to do what's right. Uh, I'm sure you guys can tell I treat, I do my best to treat all students as adults. And I try to assume that you guys are going to be up here in the step five where uh, you are going to conform to maintain community, that you are here and you are contributing and that you are encouraging one another. You are doing what's right for the betterment of the entire community. And if I punish you all, if I say, hey, you all did something wrong, you get an F, you get an F, you get an F, you get an F, you get an F. All that that's going to do is keep you at step one, right? That's all that it's going to do. All that I'm doing as an authority figure is keep on hammering you down to step one. And so for you to be able to get up here to step five, where you're saying, hey, you know what? I want to contribute to the overall community. I need to give you the opportunity to do that. And this right here is the opportunity for you guys to contribute to the community, for you guys to say, hey, this is what it is that I'm going to do to build us up as human beings, to build one another up as human beings. And I know that you guys are more than ca capable of doing this. Unfortunately, you very often never have the chance to do this because it is so much easier to just hand out punishments. You all know that it'd be so much easier for me to give everyone a zero uh, than it would be for me to find, you know, quality uh, consequences that actually help you guys to increase your desire to do what's right. Okay. Uh, here's another story for you. Uh, when I was uh, 18 years old, I got arrested. Okay. Yes, I really did get arrested. Um, I, I was arrested. They uh, accused me of stealing $30,000 worth of copper wire. Uh, I, I did actually take a, uh, just like this, this steak, uh, steak bed truck filled with wire. And, um, I turned it into a scrap yard and, uh, the scrap guard gave me a check. I was working at the Wisconsin state fair. They gave me a check, uh, and I brought the check back and I turned it into the office. Um, and the reason why we were getting rid of that copper wire is because you notice all this wire right here, it's all damaged. And so you can't use that wire. But there were people that were going around and they were ripping off our wire. They were literally cutting live wire, taking it down and going and selling it to scrapyards. Well, the police came and they were like, hey, are you Sean? And I said, yes, I am. And then all of a sudden I was flanked by like 20 police. Uh, I guess they really had nothing better to do. There were 70,000 people at the state fair. And what they had to do was get the 18-year-old that, you know, is scared to do anything wrong in their entire life. Uh, and then they start yelling at me, cursing at me, screaming at me, telling me how horrible of a person I am because I stole wire. And I was thinking to myself, I don't know what I did. I don't know what I did. And uh, the truth of the matter is I didn't do anything wrong. I did not do a single thing wrong. They said I did. Uh, they accused me of things. But, um, you know, they have that whole uh, a righteous man has nothing to fear. That's not really true. Um, now, when it comes down to it, uh, you know, a righteous man, somebody who's doing what's right, uh, you have the, uh, you know, the internal knowledge that, hey, what I did was okay. I didn't do anything wrong. Uh, but to this day, I'm still deathly afraid of cops uh, just because of that incident. Uh, there's a lot more that goes into that story. Um, but, uh, you know, they accused me of that and I was able to clear my name. Uh, but what I did find out is that the person who was stealing from the fair was actually my coworker. Um, and if I would have if I would have uh, helped my coworker at all, if I would have loaded uh, everything up to a, on a flatbed truck for him, if I would have given him a key, if I would have done anything to have helped him at all, I would have been an accomplice. It doesn't matter how large or small of an accomplice I was. If I would have helped him at all, I would have been just as liable for stealing everything as what he was. And the reason why I say that is because 
all, so often we say we just helped them. We just did this. We just did that. The truth of the matter is, is that you assisted an individual to turn in work uh, and represent themselves as something that they were not. And that is very, very wrong. Um, it's a very gray issue. Um, but we need to make sure that we have integrity and allow other people to represent themselves and allow us to represent ourselves. And so uh, that's, that's kind of what we're talking about right here is making sure that you do not contribute to other people's, um, other people's uh, misrepresentation of their work. So um, instead of doing the actual exam, because uh, I had an exam for you guys to do. Uh, I was going to have you guys do an exam just like everyone else, but uh, that really isn't an appropriate assignment for you. Um, instead, I'm going to have you do something a little bit different. I want you to write a paper for me. Um, and there's not many of you. There's only about eight or nine of you that turn yourselves in uh, for helping other people. Um, so what I want you to do is I want you to write a one to two page paper with a short uh, introduction of what it is that you want to do in your future occupation. Then I want you to find and cite a quality example in your field where multiple people committed uh, a crime, you know, in your field. So if you're in accounting, that's not going to be that hard. Just look at, uh, you know, the, uh, the stock market collapse uh, and you'll find plenty of uh, unethical behavior. Um, you know, try to find something as closely related to that as possible, to your field as possible. And then when you do that, describe what occurred. Um... And then in relation to the, the crime, define what the, who the principal was, the accomplices, accessories, aiders, abettors, uh, and outline what they did and what their consequences were for their actions. And then I also want you to identify several gray areas in your field in which people may, be, uh, may uh, make compromising decisions. And then your plan for being proactive to be above reproach in these areas. Uh, and I, I'm sure you can agree with me that this consequence is much more appropriate for uh, what you did with helping others. And what I want you to really see from this is just because you, your grade is, um, you know, that you actually have your own grade, um, it doesn't mean that it's okay that, uh, you know, you help others. Um you've got to let them have their own grade as well. Uh, and so by writing this paper, it's really uh, allowing you to see that um, individuals who cheat, uh, individuals who do things that are wrong, whoever they're helped by are normally held to the exact same standard. They are normally held with the same, uh, you know, a lot of the same uh, consequences because uh, without the accessory, without the person who helps them, uh, they're not able to actually get the work done. Um, and so that's kind of my purpose behind this. So you guys just need to turn this in uh, before the end of the semester. And like I said, you will not be able to graduate or sorry, you will not be able to pass my class until you turn this in. Um, I hope that you appreciate this uh, more than just retaking an exam. Uh, this is not for a grade. But if you turn in something that's less than stellar work, um, I will tell you to redo it. Uh, so please just turn in a quality paper uh, that I can really tell that you have done a good job thinking about this. It doesn't have to be very long, but it's got to be well done. So um, let me know if you have any questions. Like I said, at the end of the day, what I really care about is you. I care about setting you up for success. I care about uh, you... Um, you know, knowing what's right and what's wrong and to choose to do what's right and, and to not delve, uh, to, not to delve in those uh, gray areas. Cool. Thank you guys so much. And, and I really do consider myself blessed to, to have you in my class uh, and uh, just looking forward to a great rest of the semester.